So this is Brian. He had a herniated disc. Uh, he was in severe pain when he came to me. He's been coming out for three months. It's pretty much fixed. I'm going to have him just talk to you. How did you get hurt? And, and just talk about the pain and where we're at. So I was doing uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for about two years. Um, in that time, I wasn't really doing anything else. I was rolling hard for six days a week, pretty much. And uh, kind of out of nowhere, I just started having this pain, like going down the back of my hamstring and my calf. Um, initially, I just thought- Sci like, Sciatica. Yeah. So I just thought like I hurt my leg or something like that. It was until I started getting like really bad back pain. It was rolling to the point where like I just couldn't stand to do jujitsu anymore. Could you like like bend over and pick stuff up? No, or? no, it was so it was pretty, pretty severe. Bad, yeah. Um, and now so we're about three months in. He's on his third month now. So why don't you just just do a bend over row? This is ninety five pounds. First of all, Brian, would this be, even be possible for you to do? Oh, back where I hurt now. No, again, okay. bend over. So this is there's he couldn't even bend over. Now he's just gonna do now he's gonna do a bent over row for you. Okay, I mean that's pretty damn good. Considering that he had a herniated disc and sciatica like two months later. Pretty amazing. Okay, take a break. Let's go. So it's not a hundred percent. He's not ready to go back into Brazilian jiu-jitsu. His disc is still there's still a bulge in there, but we created a support structure around it. So now he can start training with it, but he's still got to watch the weight and he's got to watch some of the range of motion. We're going to show you at the end, some of the range of motion stuff that we we're going to do with his back. He's got to go a little bit lighter. But the fact that he can do that is pretty impressive. So let's go in now. We're going to show you how we fixed them with three glute exercises. We're also going to show you the progression to those glute exercises. So with this technique, we got a little bit of drop Okay, it's about two inches. You can make a towel, you can put it on there. And if we're looking at his foot, his back heel here, it's just bent a quarter of the way and it's in line with his butt here. And then his foot's just right on the cap. Okay, well, this is a pretty good angle right here. Then the key with this is, is that actually we're gonna be turning the hip down. Okay, about two inches down this way. So see how this is like two inches forward here? This is square. You gotta have your hip that far, and then that's how you know how high to move the leg up. And then, he, this is 15 pounds, okay? What our goal is, is for him, go ahead and just show the end point, is to be able to get his knee about two fists, okay, above his hip line here without his hip tilting backward like this. So if he, that's where he mastered it to with 15 pounds. You see how high that is? About two fists above. That's what we're trying to do. So we want to be, that's where he wants to be able to get in position and raise the leg. And only feel it, guys, in this glute area right here. So you want to feel it right through this kind of half moon shape. You don't want to feel it here or in the adductor chain underneath, right here, and not high up here, right there. If he feels it anywhere else, he doesn't pass the test. So if he drops down, maintains that hip angle, and he can come up, back down, and up. That's really good. So we know he passes that test. We know now his glute strength is really strong. But when Brian started with this, that's 15 pounds. Brian had five pounds, and he could only get it good. He could only go up, literally to here, in order to connect to the glute. If he went up any higher, where would you feel, Brian? Low back. He'd feel it in his low back, he'd feel it in his TFL and he wasn't feeling in the correct spot. So again, you, in order to master these exercises, you have to feel it in the right spot and understand that. So he passed his test, and then we have another exercise that we move on to, and we're gonna show you that now. So the next exercise we're gonna show you, okay, it's called Flyman. And I'm gonna have Brian do, but what I want you to understand, it's the key with this whole thing is being able to lock your hip down in place as you lift. So with that first technique, same as the second, that hip locks down. And if you don't have the range of motion built up with this first exercise that you saw Brian do, when you go to do this, it's gonna be physically impossible for you to keep your hip in this position as you lift and feel it in your glute. You're gonna feel it in other spots where you're just not gonna have the range of motion. So that's why you have to pass that test first. And now we're gonna go in and we're gonna show you Flyman. And another thing I want you to understand is, here's the clamp, the, the BS clamp. This is what everybody does. Lateral rotation with this, we're locking the pelvis completely down so it can't, so the femur head can't, you're just moving from the femur head and you're not using your hips and rolling back. 
That's why the angle of the hip down is so important here, because then we can just get pure glute medius with this exercise. We're creating that medial rotation here, so the femur head can just completely adduct, just like. So with Flyman here, we're gonna kick this, it's called Flyman, the first one was called glute fly. We're gonna just kick this leg back behind us a little bit. If this is 90 degrees here, we're gonna move it like a quarter down from 90, he's gonna to touch the toe, and then he's gonna lift, and he's gonna keep that hip forward and arch the back, that's the key, back down, up. And you notice how this isn't, you're not like this, this stays flat here, so down, up and the other key is arching the back. The key to, to the low back isn't strength of the low back, it's getting the support from the glutes so that it takes pressure off your lumbar spine, then that is what absolutely fixes the lower back. This is called the knee drop, okay? What we're tr creating is internal medial rotation of the hip. Again, the minimus hooks to the front of the hip head. I explained this in other videos. So we're gonna, you're gonna feel this deep it's going to be in the same spot that you that I showed on the other exercise. We're going to feel it like right behind the hip bone, very deep, because this is as you stretch down, you're going to be getting in the minimus. We put the pad under here to create more medial rotation. If the pad isn't under here, then look, I'm not going to have as much stretch. But if both knees are kind of turned into each other, that's what's going to create more torque on the minimus. Yes, you are going to be getting the medius with this exercise too, but it is going to be a lot of minimus because of the medial rotation. Now. If we look at his setup, he can grab here, almost like he's taking his leg back behind him. And if you notice, his heel is in line with his butt, all right? So we go here, we put this on. For him to pass a test, he's got to be able to do 20 pounds on this exercise. Without his hip, go ahead, up and down, just go slow. <laughs> he's just slamming down. You got to, the whole point of this is to control the eccentric, and he was you know, over the last couple of months, but for whatever reason, he was dropping really crazy down on the way down. You want glutes to, are tired, man. His glutes are tired. We killed him. He wants to go really slow and controlled because it's the eccentric load on this that puts the pressure onto the minimus. So he's really eccentrically stretching it on the way down, and then he comes up. But the key to the exercise is not letting his head move. So some people, they might only go really that high with their knee because that hip will move backward. Go ahead, up and down. You see how his hip stays completely still as he comes up. But some people might only be able to go up to there, go ahead up and down like that. Just go, uh, just go from here and go down and then up. Some people might only be able to do that without their hip moving backward. If they come up too high, they might roll back. So that's what we're looking for when we're doing this. Done. So this is the next level to the exercise. So once you can do 20 pounds in that position, we take the pad away and then he actually rotates his shoulder back Okay, to really open up the SI joint. He keeps that pelvis forward, right? He doesn't let it go backward. And just a little bit with the shoulder, almost like you're getting a chiropractic adjustment. Look, the heel, I'm in the same exact position. Now he's gonna grab the weight with the opposite hand. He's got 20 pounds there, and now he's going up and down. Yep, good. So now he's got rotation. So we're gonna show you single leg RDL. Now, everyone thinks, oh, well, you just go, you pick up weight to do this. The question is, do you feel it in the right spot? So when Brian started, go ahead and just show where you started in order to feel your glute. So he had to bend your knee a little bit more. He's just at a really high level, so he doesn't even remember. But talk a little bit about where you, where the right spot is and the wrong spot. So where did you feel it when you were doing this? Uh, kind of like up my low, like if I was going forward, I would feel it more kind of in my lumbar, like kind of upper glute. Yes. Not necessarily on the side glute where you wanted me to. Right. So what we want to do is when we're doing this, we want to feel it. Go ahead, down in position. We want to feel it in that same spot that we talked about on the floor. We want to feel the medius really working with the max. So there. If you start feeling it up high glute, that means that your TFL is pulling on you. Now it's pulling on the glute and then bam, transfers right in the low back. In order to fix his lumbar spine, we've got to create the glute support. So this is where he needed to start. And his back's arched. Go ahead, arch your back. And this is how far he could go down in order to connect to that. Now we're going to show you the higher level, but this was his start point for him to understand how to do the glute. Yeah. So if you notice, look, look at his knee. The knee is pushed out. Okay, his weight's on the outside of the foot here, and his pressure, he's pressuring his heel. If this collapses in, 
he's gonna lose a lot of his glue. We wanna create that abduction, so we wanna push out. The next level to it is we're gonna take the hand off and now show him where you got to. He, then he was able to get down to here and he was able to feel it. You only feel it right there, right? Nothing yeah. in the back. So those are the stages we had to go through in order for him to develop the glute medius in connection with the glute max and avoid the TFL upper glute. Your knee, and if I go here, then you can kind of open up with it. So that's why we have it in the opposite hand. And this is how I knew between these three tests, go ahead and take a break. Between this test, the glute test on the floor, and also the knee drop, that's how I knew his back was fully supported to be able to start doing bent over rows and low back. And we're gonna go over that now of how we transitioned and added that to his program. So this is one of the exercises that we added to his program about three weeks in, once I started to get his glutes to activate more, this is a really safe way to start getting into the lumbar spine without causing irritation. Again, you do not train the back until you get support from the glutes or else you're going to hurt your back again. That's the whole point of why I show you all those glute exercises. That's how you fix the back. Create the support structure. Once this is strong, take some pressure off the back and then we can start doing stuff like this. So it's just a bent over row. There's nothing special about it. It's a, I don't have him go that low with it. I just make sure his, he's at like 45 degree back angle on the way out. Goes a little bit below the knees. He started with like the bar and 10 pounds on each side. Now he's up to 95. Could he do more? He could do more, but he's still a little bit vulnerable right now. So this is what we built him up to. Again, he passed all those glute tests. That's how I knew he was ready for this. We started with this when the glutes were a little bit more active. Then he passed all the tests, and I said, okay, you're ready for bent over row, you're not gonna have any pain, and that's what we did here. So I know a lot of people like that Jefferson curl, that extreme down and up. I'm not even gonna mess with that. I don't think any human actually has to be able to get into that position. I just think it's extreme. We're gonna show you kind of like that, but I think it's safer, especially with someone at this stage. I do this as a warm up, like two sets, before he goes into his bent over rows. And he's ready to do this. This is actually, we just started adding this today. This is on his third month. So just show him what we, what we did today is kind of like a warm up before you went into the other exercises. He's just doing a bent over row, except he's just going a little bit lower and he's gonna stretch. He's gonna let this round a little bit and then he just comes up. Pretty simple. So now just tell him like how you feel. Well, I feel like anytime I'm going lower, uh, like trying to touch the toes, like Zach says, that's when it could like aggravate symptoms. Uh, over the past three months, we've just trying to kind of figure out like how far we can push it without actually aggravating it. So kind of with the body control exercises that we've been doing these past three months, it kind of gave me a little better sense of my body to kind of find that point, but not go over that point. That's perfect, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, why am I, <laughs> when you see these guys doing these crazy Jefferson girls, great. I'm not ever going to do that with him. He never has to do that. He'll build up very slowly and then he'll touch the floor and he'll come up. But this is just a nice warm up for him to start getting that tissue to strength and lengthen out and start letting that herniated disc start opening up a little bit more. Thanks, Brian. That's a cool